a coalition of northern groups speaks on the need for a referendum, so we ask him, what is the fate of groups seeking self-determination? Police managers to brace up to anticipated internal security challenges. Customs seize containers laden with guns. Just how secure are Nigerians? And like always, we will be reviewing the dailies with an analyst. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. And I am Messia Bopo. It's just five days to Christmas. Uh, I think it's all right to say Merry Christmas. Welcome to the show. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Monday morning. Wow, Christmas is here again. Well, we're counting down. And I would trust that all of us are going to have ourselves a wonderful Yuletide. Like always, uh, we indeed usually start uh, with uh, what's trending across um, various uh, social media spaces and what um, Nigerians and indeed the world, you know, is talking about. You know, uh, but today we'll start off with what happened over the weekend. Yes, 18-year-old uh, uh, Hijabi Shatu Garko uh, becomes uh, the first uh, Muslim to, you know, win that coveted crown of Miss Nigeria. Wow. Gako actually hails from Kano State. Uh, Mercy, I, when I read this, uh, when I was researching about this, I was really, super, I was really, you know, amazed that with all, with all the women are done with their long hairdos and everything, but she was really looking very, you know, intact as it were, you know, with her hijab, and uh, she won amongst other um, contestants, uh, beating other seventeen uh, finalists at an event on Friday. Well, you know that for every contest, I mean, the usually criteria is a good thing that, uh, because I saw that there were different reactions. Now, uh, normally, uh, when you have uh, a contest like that, for you to become a winner, it goes beyond just the outlook. I mean, I've actually witnessed, I've actually, uh, you know, compared such events. So, uh, it just not, it's not just about your outfit, it's not about how beautiful you look. Uh, most times, one of the major issues is usually how you're able to answer some of the questions that are put out to you and uh, to order. In most cases, you also have uh, the fact that they also check out your creativity, depending on what you know the contest is about yeah, well, at the end of the day. It. So usually they, they ask you questions. You find out that some people are being asked about Nigeria, the continent, or just general questions. So it's not usually about you know who's well dressed or who is not mm. uh, well dressed. So the criteria are the criteria is not just limited to dressing or limited to you know the fact that you have a beautiful face. So, but yes, I, I totally understand the fact that a lot of people are reacting and saying, oh yes, this NC has actually won. That's to some quarter, uh, that's to some group of persons who actually think that yes, we found out that you know it's not just about putting out your body because usually the perception about contest and what we get to see is that people get to put out you know parts of their body out there. That's what we uh, usually Very see. revealing. So, uh, that particular notion and so the fact that she's wearing a hijab mm. and the fact that she's covered and all of that is the reason why we're having all of that conversation. But on the other hand, I don't know if you actually, you know, saw all of the reactions and the comments. Uh, the, some sects, group section from, you know, the Muslim community, they are reacting and saying she's totally on her own. It doesn't really concern them uh, because really if she's really a Muslim, she would not really go out for that particular contest. It goes against their rules and traditions and what they believe in. So, yes, it's just a mixed feeling. But it's a good thing. I mean, you know, because the Miss Nigeria contest, is, this contest has been going on for mm -hmm. a very long time. I mean, yeah. you've had several persons that have won, you know, this beautiful contest. So, yes, congratulations to her. That's yeah. part of the reaction that we're getting. Mm. Well, congratulations to Shatu um, Garako. You know, but the concern really for me is that um, this is actually a, a good step in the right direction because over time, like you had said, uh, it always, uh, you know, uh, most people would always want to dwell on, um, you know, the physical looks, uh, what she's wearing, um, the bikinis, and of course, uh, the catwalks and all of it. But I'm actually really, really impressed that the organizers of this show would actually uh, 
allow. Over time, some pageants will not even allow you to, you know, respect some of um, your religious, uh, you know, beliefs and everything. Like if you don't follow this stuff, uh, you'd uh, or this particular guidelines, you'd not be allowed to contest. But the fact for the fact alone that they allowed, uh, you know, um, the 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 wearing of hijab for that particular contest to me it is um, for me it is no but this is not the one. first time it's happening i'm just saying mm. you know in the world yes. right uh there was a time in 2013 where you had a nigerian she's a nigerian who contested in indonesia mm. i mean i think it was muslim miss world something like that that particular pageant and she won mm. but you know the, the reaction would always come for True. those who believe in um you know those who are Muslims. I mean, it generated a lot of reactions at that time and not quite different from what we're getting because some people say, oh, if she's truly a Muslim, she's not going to even go out to put out that contest. And some people are saying what she's wearing is not. So, um, yes, it didn't happen in Nigeria, but probably would have happened. Uh, I really don't like to get myself involved in all of this sentiment. So beautiful, she's a beautiful lady. Yeah, she is. Uh, and, she was and I think that a lot of persons who are, I mean, if you look at them, it's not like they're indecently dressed. Everybody no, looks properly dressed. They are modestly dressed. Uh, they're all looking very beautiful. They're all beautiful women in their own, in their own, you know, way. Yeah. Well, congratulations to Asha, uh, to uh, Garko. May you enjoy your reign, and I trust uh, this is just the beginning for other beautiful things uh, to come for you. We'll just uh, follow your, you know, your development, and of course, uh, we wish you all of them the best. Away from Asha uh, to uh, Garko, another thing that trended over the weekend, uh, some Nigerians have suffered some um, annoying fate, if you ask me, some very sad fate uh, over in um, Togo. You know, they were supposed to be coming to Lagos uh, from a flight, uh, you know, from, I think it was from the UAE, Mercy. And um, at the end of the day, uh, they were told that um, the flight, uh, their connecting flight to Lagos was filled up and um, they could not go. So they tried protesting because they felt it was not really right, you know, for them to just be left like that. And now uh, before you know it, uh, they were mistreated or treated. I even heard they were even coughed. But it took um, the intervention of um, the Minister of um, uh, um, Foreign Affairs, um, Jeffrey um, Onyama, who put a call to the ambassador before the Nigerians were airlifted uh, back to Nigeria on Saturday. You can even just watch the video. It was really, really a sad one. They are not criminals for, you know, for crying out loud. You know, when I saw that video and it surfaced, it broke my heart because we still talk about police brutality. It's not just limited to Nigeria. I mean, let's not forget that where we're at today, we're talking about the hashtag NSAS and the mm -hmm. call for a reform of the entire police sector in Nigeria. But if you look across the entire globe, I mean, you find that police brutality is so even uh, just you know, airport security, man. you know, is, is, is a common thing, and then you look at all of that manhandling. I do not have a problem if you are a criminal or you're involved in any criminality or whatever, it doesn't mean that the law should not, you know, take its place. True. The law will catch up with you at every point in time. But does the law stipulate how this person should be treated? I mean, because you just look at it, you're, you're already being treated like. Um, you know, judgment has been given because it feels like judgment has already been passed. Oh. I mean, to the laws, and I'm sure that these laws are not just limited. It should be universal that mm -hmm. everyone is uh, found, you know, guilty by a court of competent guilt. jurisdiction. Yeah. So that would be a universal. I'm not thinking that that's just limited to Nigeria. It's a global law. I it mean, is. across. Yes. Yes. So um, then it, it's just so sad. And then some people would say that this is also happening in you know the continent i mean mm. this is africa just, just uh, within our west, Af uh, west africa <laughs> you get so region. Wh why are we having all of this what what could really necessitate i mean you could just see so much violence you could just see all of that does it really mean that when you just mentioned that you're nigerian i must say nigerian should be excluded from if you're found guilty mm. my point is how do we go about discharging our duties as police officers across the entire world mm. Should we act like animals? Does the law not stipulate that we should do it, you know, in a respectful manner? And you don't begin to treat people whatever, for whatever offense or offenses you think they've committed. I'm sure that there's a way, there are procedures on how they should be handled. Clearly, you know, so it just, it really rights. breaks my heart. And I yes. keep saying this, that, you know, as, as, a, as a people, you know, we have lost humanity. Mm. So what, you, you find out that people no longer treat people because that's an inhuman treatment. Uh, very, you, very you, you, you just yeah, found out that people no longer treat people as human anymore. I mean, that's like even dogs are treated properly these days than that kind of treatment it, that you would see. Mercy, so I'm not just very, speaking very because sad. it's the Nigerian. Nigerian no, it's wrong. It could have happened. I'm just to saying that that's person. a human being that yes. you are subjecting. And they have rights. You know, to all of that. But it's a good thing rights. that you also have the authorities in Nigeria intervening. And that's what we we'll keep saying that every life is very important. It doesn't matter whoever is involved, every life 
is important. I'm glad I'm glad they actually intervened, but that it should just go beyond that um, intervention. I think the matters, you know, should be, or that particular matter should be investigated. And of course, uh, you know, let's try and talk about our diplomacy. You know, if we have um, ECOWAS and we have like um, a regional block that uh, caters to issues like this, why should we be manhandled? Why should we be brutalized in a um, an airport in a sub region does not really make yeah, sense. So, you know, I mean, it just brings us, even if you even if you want to talk about the bilateral, mm. I mean, for the fact that we are all in the same, you know, continent and we're yeah. in the same region, you would expect that we should get. Uh, I'm not saying that, like I, I mentioned earlier on, I'm not saying that Nigerians should be excluded. It's because, oh, no. the person is a Nigerian. Uh, they should be excluded. I'm saying that if a Nigerian or any other person from any other country, as long as they're a human being, they should be given some fair tr treatment. Mm -hmm. And I know that the police or the laws, you know, I know that we're in different countries, different zones, and different areas. But I'm also saying that these laws are not different from what it is. It is universal in treating people. Yes, even if someone has been found guilty of an offense, I'm sure that there's a way to go you know, to handle the situation, uh, mediation not that, that, you know, uh, brutalize them into your own and hands. deal with them. So the issue yeah. of, you know, police brutality, as much as we speak about it in Niger, as much as we say, oh, in the, you know, in the Western world, we we'll find out that, yes, uh, you want to say is um, a racist kind of issue. You know, they'll say, okay, it's racism mm. and all of that, you know, the blacks against the white, you know, the color issue. But you come back to, you know, the continent and then you see one and the same thing. It's not different. So I feel like, uh, you know, there's a lot of training and retraining that needs to, you know, mm. go on in the entire uh, yes, yes, uh, and I pray and I just hope uh, we'll see the last of that because that, that should not just be swept under the carpet. Well, moving on, uh, I'm sure uh, you remember a particular video that went viral uh, where uh, a call member, you know, uh, proposed uh, to a female soldier and uh, she accepted. Well, from what we hear, uh, that particular uh, <laughs> female... <laughs> The particular soldier. <laughs> Why know. are you laughing? I don't know because she was all happy. She was excited, and um, I was happy. I was like, you know how you guys would go, ah. You know, so <laughs> it was. It I'm was embarrassed a, to that. <laughs> it was a happy moment. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not trying to make um, light of the whole matter, but from what we understand that she was eventually detained and uh, the army has come out to say that uh, she broke some of the standing rules of the army. That she. Look, okay, amongst one of them, you know, Mercy, they talked about um, the standing guidelines and directive for use of social media. She was hugging the guy after the proposal, and they said that she should not be indulging in romance with a uh, while in uniform. Her, her conduct was prejudicial to good order and military discipline. See, uh, we need to understand that laws would always be... I mean, we're still talking about laws here yeah. and obeying laws. Uh, there are rules and regulation. Uh, that guide or that guides every institution or organization. Mm. I mean, everywhere you have the constitution. For us, it's the book that guides the entire, you know, the affairs of the country. She was overwhelmed by love. Mercy. No, you, no, you can't, you can't, you can't say you don't know what you're dealing with. I mean, before you Maybe get she into a place, one minute. Well, that's on that's on her. And let's not forget that the military. We constantly say that the military has lost her professionalism, mm -hmm. and these are some of the issues that you put out. Okay, so the military is a very, very sensitive, you know, um, part of every country. I'm not saying that every other um, part of the country or my other bodies and agencies are not. I know that you're, you're smiling because <laughs> I really don't know why you're smiling. Because I went on one knees, mercy, and she accepted No, but nobody's proposal. saying, I mean, before you engage, I like the fact that you also saw that the military put out a statement to say, mm. yes, we're saying this. They have actually, yeah. she's broken the rules and, you know, yes, the regulation has. that government. It's almost the same thing that happened with Q Tabiola. Now, whether uh -huh. or not we're able to, you know, verify, uh -huh. uh, we're able to verify some of those things that have been stated that it is what it is. But the point is, the military is saying that, yes, the Nigerian army, I beg to say, that is saying that, yes, um, some guidelines and regulations have been broken. And laws okay. are laws. Hmm. We're saying that these laws need to be respected. This is, this was is, this she, was this is what... She wasn't even she aware that um, she wasn't due for marriage. And she just accepted because the guy went on one knees. The, po knee, the, the point, you, you see, it, it just brings us also she back. The words. No, it brings, us, are meant it, it brings us to back be to the, you, it brings us back to the recent pattern that we have. That's on. I mean, that's going on. Mm. If you know now that you know uh, proposal and marriage proposal has become you know a thing of public. Very showy. Yeah. So we we have decided to make it like. Uh, 
a public thing. It has to be very public. And so I'm just thinking that somebody is just copying a trend. I'm just saying, okay, so if let's I went, just go by the trend. So if I went you on don't one, wear, if I went there, on don't one even knee. bring it. <laughs> there are a lot of people that are very... But if I went on one knee and proposed to you that you wouldn't accept. Why would I accept? Because I'm not <laughs> good you, enough. Or what? Because <laughs> it's unprofessional. Or I'm breaking the, the laws right now. I mean, you also oh, need because to the Monday morning. What exactly uh, are the Well, you need to understand the people involved. I mean, before you go ahead, what is what going true. on? You should no, know so your you need to understand. Of first of all, you need to understand. I'm thinking that the lady should know better, and true. also the core member is a graduate. He should also understand. I'm, I'm sure that you you just find a way. There's something <laughs> that they said that when you go to the room, you you find out how they like the So you, know, you need I'm to true. you need I'm to true. understand. You need to understand the laws that guide. You know everything. You can't just follow the the ban you know, because wagon. you want to also because trend. You also want to trend. You're seeing people doing this thing, and then you think that okay, you're doing it so that you get you the you know the sensation and all of that. For all of us, Messi. Well, eh? oh, I well. hope you've not been going about posting and all those stuff that you do sometimes. <laughs> Because most of the next thing you were like, no, no, no. I, mean, uh, no, I don't know how do people do that. No, that's, you live on the gram a lot. That's restricted. If you follow me on social media, what I actually post I have, on Twitter, I, okay. what I post on Twitter and what I post on Instagram and what I post on Facebook and WhatsApp, quite different. Now, WhatsApp is like a very private. True. It feels like I'm inviting you to my personal space. So if you're mm -hmm. there, you're very lucky to be there. Oh, right? I am lucky. So, so what, what I post on my Instagram is quite different from what you have. But the point okay. is, laws are laws and, and they, they should, should be respected. Be they should be obeyed. And the reason why you know we constantly say that Nigerian is a lawless country is because we don't obey laws. We but Nigerians are not Nigerians. You signed laws. up to be in the so military. So seriously, I have no bad blood about. I mean, it's a good thing to be in love, but darling. You need to understand the laws that govern your organization. And so, if she's going to take a few bulala and kuboku, it's okay. <laughs> well, you know, if, if it were to be a man, they would have said that the man was actually, uh, you know, using using the female core member. No, the army said that, that uh, Tango was actually a late a female core member. If it was a, a male, uh, a female, uh, sorry, um, uh, officer, if it were a male, it was, it was, it was be okay, as it though. Okay, look at save, you know, he yes. is. Fussing his yes, having because his way and yes, all that. you get so I that's totally, just I it. totally get it, but yeah. you know, the case anyway. So, be careful, you know, <laughs> how you go about um, proposing on social media, what you do on social media for the gram, like uh, people would always say. But that's as much as we can take on top trend. Then we'll take a quick break, and when we return, uh, Open Up Inco Retire will be joining us on Off the Press in a moment. Stay with us.